Hello, everybody. So, I am uh, recording this from uh, the, uh, what you call it, console, app, whatever, on my computer so I can stream it because I do not have a capture card at this moment, so bear with me with that. But uh, I'm going to show you guys a little bit ins and outs of Dragon Age um, as you guys are beginning or even after you've begun and you're still just kind of lost because, I mean, it took me a little bit to figure out this game. I mean, it's what? four five six years something like that after uh launch so but uh, i'm just gonna go in here and i'm gonna kind of commentate uh how i play on top of uh little ins and outs like i was saying on the dragon map or frozen castle as we call it or as it's called um but uh after that, uh, over the next few days, I will be doing a in-depth guide for every character for you all. Um, also, on top of that, other maps as well, if that's uh, what you guys would like. I'm most likely going to do it either way. Um, but, yeah, well, let's get into it whenever we, uh, you know, finally load into the game. <coughs> oh, excuse me. If I sound a little weird, uh, it's because I just woke up about 20, 30 minutes ago. We've gotten reports of a high dragon nearby. The best, uh, Ferelding castle slash dragon. I will show you after this. I forgot to show it when I, um, was setting up the match, but, uh, you gotta, instead of going to the right like it looks like, to change it, you gotta go down again. Um, but the best one I'd recommend would probably be, you're gonna get knocked down a lot, it would be Frost, however... You won't take much damage compared to the lightning and the fire. Um, That's me. Let's see. Make sure you guys are grabbing all the pots. That's the big thing. I've uh, been down into the routines and threatenings with uh, people. And just helping them out and... I see all three of them just run by three or four pots. Even at my level, even though I don't need the gold as much as you guys do, I, I'll still get it myself. Especially if I'm playing in a lower level lobby. So, you see these glyphs on the ground here? Don't step on them, because you'll take damage. Um, that way you guys don't find out the hard way, because you probably already found out the hard way. Um, uh, let's come back here, check in so- oh, there we go, check in here. Oh, how dare you block a fucking fire thing to your face. Um... Another thing you guys can do, um, I can't show you this because I don't have somebody to help me, um, but once you fade, you can go into the fade and see what these, what these are vulnerable to, like the, um, these guys, oops. it seems like the archers and the foot soldiers aren't really, um, vulnerable or resistant to anything, um, however the shield guys are electricity, uh, vulnerable. And then the mages aren't resistant to, well, they're resistant to the, to the element, obviously. However, they're not vulnerable to ice. If I go up here, and let's say I freeze that one, that does 21,000, uh, or 2100, right? Once I get it back, I will, I'll freeze something else. We will go ahead and freeze this archer. See, 21. So you would think that they'd be, uh... Vulnerable to ice, they are not. Though. I do apologize if I ramble on this. I do really enjoy this game. Uh, this is the first time I really get to. I mean, I've helped people in the past, but this is going to be permanent. So uh, I do apologize about the rambling. Just trying to get all the information out as I can in one video. It's going to be about a 20 minute video because that's how long it takes for me to do a run. But as you see me standing here, 
don't ever go past i would say the end of the rubble here i mean you can go a little bit farther but i just stay stay back here um because you will block the spawn because as you see as i'm killing them they're spawning up there which means well more xp and if you guys are going up there with melee characters and attacking them like the instincts would be to do you're gonna unintentionally or intentionally block spawn which means less XP, so just stay back, let your... It's going to be a boring uh, first uh, first round for you melee players, but uh, just stay back. Uh, you can either stay over here in the little cubby hole. Uh, if you're playing solo, see how I uh, line of sighting them? You just got to get out of the line of sight and they'll come to you, see that? Um, either there or down here. Again, line of sight, or some people like to sit on the on these stairs for the melee people. It's all really uh, what your group is doing. I'm not sure if you're going to be playing solo, playing in the group, but uh, another thing uh, too on the Ferelden Castle for pots. There is only four pots on the whole zone compared to on the other maps like uh, Trevinter, Elven, and uh, or Legion, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, there are four in one zone, right? And then there's two possible in each guarded door. Looks like it's a warrior door again. Yep. Uh, any pots of gold. Sometimes, yep, there's one. Sometimes I'll be here. <coughs> oh my god, my voice. Sorry, guys. Um, be so, one right here. I do apologize about that. I have my F7 for my muting of the mic. And I just... Give me a sec. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I have F7 uh, on my... I should have hit... Uh, what you call it? Don't ever ask again, but that was on me. But, uh, yeah, f is my mute on my OBS because I had to cough really bad and I don't want you guys to hear it. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually going to press it again real quick. There we go. Let me double check. And all right, you guys can hear me. Perfect. So down below uh, in the comments, uh, after this, uh, after you watch this or even now, go ahead and uh, post what your constitution, cunning, and willpower are. <clears throat> I am curious to see what the range is of people. Um, if you're, <clears throat> oh my God. I do really apologize. I don't know why my fucking why I have so much phlegm or whatever you want to call it. But um, I stand here. However, I can take all the hits for you guys. I mean, if you guys have Cerebus barrier, Keeper or Elementalist barrier, you can stand here. But get off of me, Assassin. The best spot would be in here because you right behind the rug. That way, you're not blocking spawn. Um, but, what you call it, because the only way you can, you're can you going to get shot from the dragon is from behind here, and it is extremely rare. Not impossible, I've, I've seen it happen, but very rare. Main thing too is the uh, reason you're doing these is to funnel the enemies, um, on top of uh, being, uh, making them... Again, funnel, so you can use area of effect to get rid of them, compared to me just sitting here basic attacking the whole time. I could just emulate the whole group right there and do damage, in your case, to all four of those enemies. Or in my case, kill all four of those enemies at the same time, instead of having to whittle them out one at a time. And that's what this game's really about. I mean, yeah, it's a team-based game, but sometimes you can't like right now, I don't have anybody to play with. I could open it up to the public. 
Um, but for me, it's more of a hassle to play with the public at this point because of new players because they don't know what to do, so they're just trying to learn the game. Uh, which is understandable, so I don't... I'm not upset when I play in a public lobby. I only get upset when they block spawn and they don't listen, but... However, it's an older game. I just I just play to play now. I don't play to grind like I used to. You'll have that bug a lot too where you go to anything in your right bumper or whatever. You go to uh, activate it and you just saw me jumping a lot because on my, on my end I hit the right bumper but the game doesn't register it. Alright, uh, combos is another thing we, we should go through while I'm playing. Um, there's a few different uh, combos, actually a lot of different combos. Um, I'm gonna mess up all the names because, well, I don't pay attention to the names. The most popular one is the shatter combo, which would be freezing of the enemies. On top of, oh, side note real quick, since uh, if you are at full health, your whole team's at full health on the dragon map, do not, do not get the recovery font. Because on this map only can you jump off the edge of the map and get teleported back to the start. So I like, let's see. First, let me get the nug. Impressive. Um. So like, say your your whole team's red barring, right? One of you can just jump off the edge of the map, come back, boom, free team heal. All right, back to sh uh, back to combos. So shatter. You get you freeze, and then you have um, an impact detonator, as in like a uh, long shot from the archer, um, stone fist from uh, elementalist. Uh, who else has it? Arcane, mighty blow from uh, the two-hander, shield bash for the sword and shields, and then there's also a, an unknown, couple unknown combos like if I freeze him, and then. Oh, if I emulate, see how it did double damage to that target? That's a combo, but I don't know the name of it. It's not listed, really. And it doesn't say shatter or anything like that. There's also another combo, as in, where are you, big guy? Freeze, and then you use energy barrage. It's going to do, see the 8,000 right there? It did a hell of a lot more than what it normally does on the initial. Um... <clears throat> Uh, there's other combos that I can't show you on this character. Um, there's panic or nightmare combos where you put someone to sleep and then you use an eldritch uh, detonator. Um, so when you're building your character, especially in a group, look at if there's uh, combo primers or combo detonators, because those will do a lot of damage. So that assassin went invisible, however, you could see little ripples over here. So pay attention to that, you can also hear when uh, they're near you. That right there is uh, another combo, uh, what was that, I think that was, um, it's an eldritch combo. What happened was, they, uh, they got staggered by my belt, and when they get staggered, they're vulnerable to different types of rupture combos, uh, uh, eldritch, I believe, and then, uh, Fuck. There's like I said, there's so many that I just I know what they are, but they, I don't know the names of them, and I don't know how to really describe it to you guys until it happens. But what happened there was they got staggered, and my emulate acts as a detonator, and it detonated that combo, doing the uh, however much spirit damage it did. Let's see if I can't get another one to stagger real quick for you. Come on, stagger. There we go. See how I did the 12,000 on top of the 4,000 for me? However, for you guys, obviously the damage would be different. Uh, no. 
old buddy East Knight's on, but I don't play with him much. And Tinker, they're playing, most likely playing together. Alright, sorry about that, I was just seeing if there was anybody on that I could play with that would it be able to help me with combos. As in, like, help me show you them. Because there's some characters, like the Elementalist, the, um, uh, what you call it? Cerebus, for one, is a good one to cross-class yourself, which gives more XP. Um, there's a lot more, I just can't think of them off the top of my head. When we get back to the lobby, uh, I will tell you guys a little bit more about uh, the game and what you're going to want to look for, what uh, weapons you're going to want to keep. Over here. Just in time, my Don't worry about keeping the captain alive. I mean, you can try. However, you can't barrier him. You, you can healing mist him. Which is weird because it does 500 health, but if you when you do it, it only does like a sliver to him. But then when he gets hit, it it just obliterates what the healing you've done. So I only do it if it's like a last minute thing, and even then I don't really bother. All right, I hear. Oh, I thought I heard a. Uh... Oh, yep, there he is. Oh, and another one, another two. Oh, uh, big thing, big, big thing when you're playing uh, ranged characters. Lock onto your targets. You're going to be like, but why? Um, you'll see here, um, if I want to target, uh, where is he? That that mage right there, way in the back. In order for me to do that, i got to lock onto it. Other than that, I'm, I'm attacking this uh, foot soldier in front of me here, see? Um, so if you want to specifically attack a target, make sure you're locking onto it because sometimes you got to get rid of, like, say, a despair demon before anything else gets out. That despair demon could kill you guys. here for gold I hear you assassin you can also see the reticle there too sometimes if they get close enough now when I do my uh, I'm gonna say this again in my uh, builds for the game or for each character but if you see me running a build that I don't recommend that's because I have better gear than you guys do so I don't need to run this the build I'm gonna give you guys like on all the mages I recommend running fade cloak however I don't do it because I don't need it
Another big thing too, like I said, you, if you can't really do this if you're playing solo, is group up. Uh, have make sure you have all three mage, warrior, rogue. Uh, especially if you're playing the smaller maps, as I call them, the Elven or Legion and Interventor. Those are meant for gold. These, uh, the Dragon map doesn't really have much for gold. Um, but if you're playing on here, make sure you destroy this. Whether it's like with the Mighty Blow or you wait for the Dragon to hit you. Because um, this is important to get rid of. There we go. I will explain why here in a second. Sprinting and jumping is a lot faster than just sprinting. Um, just makes people think that you're lagging when you're not. Um, this is where you're going to want to sit. Because they can't come from behind you. The only time they can come from behind you is if it's an assassin. Other than that, they're all going to be coming straight on. Right, the Venatori Commander is here. For you guys, I recommend getting rid of the Commander as soon as possible. See right now, if I was trying to do work on the Commander, I'd be hitting that Brute in front of me. Instead, if I didn't uh, lock on to... Lock on to her. Um, another big, big thing is support XP. Uh, there's a lot of ways to get support XP. The main thing is barrier. Running barrier, making sure your teammates get the barrier, making sure they're taking damage with the barrier on. Um, that's why I'm running it on here, because you can have, uh, what you call it, a lot of support XP just based off the barrier. Um, Legionnaire and Templar have uh, support XP. But I'll get into that when I make their in-depth uh, guide to how to play those characters. I do apologize about how long this video's taken. I figure I kind of do like a commentary of myself uh, or a voiceover or not really a voiceover because I'm doing it live while I'm playing but just to kind of show you what I'm talking about I'm, I'm a visual learner I'm not sure how you guys learn but I, I want to see it and not just hear it um, but see how much easier it is for me to just sit here and let them come to me rather than going out there and going to the enemies um, at the end of the day, though, it's personal preference. I like this because I could just sit here and literally just hold down the right trigger and occasionally do my abilities for me. But if you are playing with somebody, um, you all you gotta do, uh, if you die, like I said, if you die, just go into the fade. Take the time to learn more about the game. That's how I learned the majority of their weaknesses was being faded. Yeah, it sucks. Boohoo, you're dead. Suck it up is all I can really say. <laughs> I see you there, assassin. Come on. Alright. So now let's get into the uh, gearing part of the video. Only the necessary scars. Agents did well. I'm also going to, while we're here, I'll talk about what the effects of the Constitution, Cunning, and Willpower have on the game.
<laughs> I forget what I usually do for the last one. There we go, fuck it. Alright. So, let's get into our constitution, willpower, and cunning down there in the middle. Um, the constitution, you, st all, you all start off at 10, 10, 10. But for each one constitution you get, you get 5 health. 0.5% towards your melee defense for all characters, so it's not just for your warriors. Um, uh, your willpower is the same thing for the defense, the 0.5% towards magic defense. However, I am not 100% sure on the percentage for damage increase, so I'm not going to comment on that. I do know if you do, obviously, the willpower is your damage dealer. Um, and then cunning is really important if you want to do damage early on people don't realize how important it is because once you get uh your cunning up you're critting a lot because your cunning is 0.5 percent range defense and a 0.5 percent uh, increase to your um critical chance so once you get that up to say 80 to 90 which is a lot for you guys um but you're gonna be critting about 40% of the time, yeah, 40% of the time, 50% of the time is at 100 cunning. And that crit chance will help you because once you, uh, let's go into my inventory. Once you get these weapons, the hack on weapons, or even, like, do I have any, uh, the critical damage. Once you get the weapons that have all the critical damage, or you have, oop, your critical damage rings once you're critting a lot these become really powerful because then you inc you're increasing your damage without increasing your willpower um so that's what the willpower constitution and cunning and all that do um let's see you can also see in the left here the core stats to each uh character so like the legionnaire is going to have more armor and more health however the lower attack Compared to, like, I think the Cerebus has the lowest in the game for health. Yeah. Um, another thing you guys can do on the bottom here is Proving Grounds. I'm not going to enter it because it's... Ooh, excuse me. It's literally a very basic detailed guide. Uh, not detailed. Basic guide tutorial on the game. You also get... Um, if you haven't done it already, you get a free character, I believe, out of it. Um... You can also see their background if by pressing X or square on the PS4. And you can see a little bit of background if you wanted to. I mean, I don't. I already read all these. Um, but. Alright. Gearing. Uh, let's start with uh, left to right. Uh, One-handers. Um, you're going to be looking for... There's a few of them I don't have because I don't... I just got rid of them. Uh, but the of the dragon weapons, like Longsword of the Dragon, Maul, Greatsword, uh, basically anything that says, says of the dragon, you guys are going to want to get right away. And now you're going to probably wonder, but Commander, how do you get these weapons? Well, I'm going to explain that here in a second. But uh, they all come stock with some sort of heal on kill. And heal on kill is going to be amazing for you guys. Uh, because on my staff, where's my, oh, it's up top. I have 30% heal and kill. So now 30% heal and kill. I think I have roughly 2,000 health. 2,500, something, something like that. That's about 600. I'm not really going to do math, but if I remember correctly, it's 600 health back per kill for me. Um, so having that bit of heal and kill on routine and threatening is going to push you to... Uh, push you over the edge because i remember when i first started i wasn't able to do routine by myself because all i had was the inquisition sword or the inquisition gear so definitely keep an eye out for long sword of the dragon um bitter axe um the explosion on kill is awesome but if you had the long sword i'd run that because of the heal on kill unless you're playing in a group if you're playing in a group then definitely run the bitter axe because well if you're playing in a group it's really, it won't matter if you're taking damage on the Legionnaire or Templar. Um, these ones, no matter what, you're going to want to hold on to. Uh, these are going to be a little bit harder for you to get 
just like the dragon weapons. The dragon weapons are going to be easier. Um, but you have to get the blue 26s to get to the purple 26s here. Just these two items. Or these two categories. Um, but it, to get the... Uh, I call them dwarven weapons because they came out with the uh, Descent DLC. To get them, you have to... Um, along with the dragon weapons, you have to do... Dra you have to kill dragons on the difficulty of perilous and above um there are blue dragon weapons i don't have any of them because i don't need them but to get those is i think routine and above or routine and threatening only i don't think i've ever gotten a blue dragon weapon from a perilous nightmare a heartbreaker dragon um but yeah those are a few weapons on the one handers to look at um now two handers again we got I prefer the Maul of the Dragon because it comes with heal on kill. The Great Sword it does not. Well, it does 8%, but I'd rather go with the 11% because you can also add a haft and a pommel to it. Um, Skywatcher's Cleaver, definitely better than any other two-hander. Um, I did have the hack on. Uh, but I, <laughs> I scrapped it in order to get a better version, and I dropped like six hundred to seven hundred thousand gold so far, and I still haven't gotten it back. Kind of regretting it, but whatever. Um, Skywatcher's Cleaver, as you see, comes stock with twenty-seven percent heal on kill, on top of adding a grip and a pommel and a rune. So you can go ahead and add either more heal on kill, or you can add crit damage or crit chance or whatever you want. So keep an eye out for of the dragon weapons. Um, Skywatcher's Cleaver, Revere Defender weapons, um, Stonebreaker. Pay attention to these because, as you saw here, um, the names change once they go to the purple. So pay attention to, like, the emblem there. Um, staff. There's a lot of different good staffs. Um, my personal favorite, obviously, Scepter of Razical. It's got the 5% chance to cast fade cloak on the head on top of a grip a blade and a rune with 11 percent healing kill which you can increase decrease um but uh, once i just had my crit chance up to about 50 percent i turned this into a mini hack on by giving it i think 70 to 80 percent crit damage bonus um but totally up to you the fade cloak is going to be the main thing that's going to help you guys um because it procs a lot. Um, Yanavanis, I most likely butchered that name, but it's another good one because it comes with heal on kill again, 9%, barrier damage of 41%, but the on hey, you gain 5 guard. Yes, guard on a mage, on top of a grip and a blade. Um, Staff of the Dragons, the best fire staff in the game um, because, well, there isn't anything better. They had a better fire staff in it, but they took it out a few years, a long time ago. Um, however, you can't, you can only put a rune on it. So, like, it kind of, it, it's good for a beginner. Um, Heart of Despair is alright. Uh, I don't use it, I just have it just because. Heart of Pride, definitely, if you find it, keep it. Um, you're going to use this a lot for your um, Cerebus, or even if you do want to use it on the fact that it comes with plus 48 willpower, which will help you guys out a lot. On top of the Perma Shock, where all the enemies are shocked around you, and you gain a 50% bonus to uh, attack speed and a resistance to electricity. Again, a Lyrium into your staff, uh, item level 26, which will give you to the Ascendant Song once you get upgraded. Uh, Kingfisher is also another good one. Uh, 11% heal and kill. Pull of the Abyss on hit, or chance of it. Again, barrier damage, uh, grip, and a blade. As you can see, the uh, trend here is the best weapons come with heal and kill. That way you don't have to worry about putting it on um, daggers, uh, silencer, and the stone stalker blade, which are the 26s. Really, really overpowered. Bloody Bargain, another good one. Um, comes with 17% heal and kill. Uh, I forgot what else it comes with. It might not even come with a... I think it does, but... 
it's overall really good because of the rampage down there. On kill, movement and attack speed increases by 10% for 30 seconds, stacks upon 5 times, which means you can have a 50% attack speed and a 50% movement speed. Um, Dagger of the Dragon, here's the stats for him. Not really the greatest, however, if you double him up, that's 8% heal on kill for you guys. There are better, there's some other daggers out there that I don't have, unfortunately, because I scrap them because I don't use them. Savage Thorn, which is a, what you call it, guard on hit dagger. Um, I'm going to start keeping them, that way I can do another guide for you guys. Hopefully by the time I do my assassin and double dagger guide, I'll have them so I can show you guys. Alright, on to the bows. Um, long shot. it was one of the first bows I got and I've used for a while. Um, however, I scrapped it and then upon I got it again. Uh, that's why it's empty. Um, but uh, it's not the greatest, but for you guys, uh, definitely you can put a grip in there. 30% um, damage if not being hit. Or 30% bonus damage if not being hit for 5 seconds, which came in handy. Um, flanking damage as well, which, I mean, I'm not, I don't really worry about that. Um, but the best, one of the best bows in the game until you get your hack on is the heartstring bow. Now, you're going to wonder why. One, it comes stock with 22% heal on kill on top of a heal on hit of 1% of your maximum health. Now, there's two things you can do with this bow. You could, well, three things. You could go more heal on kill, which I don't recommend. Um... Because 22% is a decent amount because there's, like I said, the other two options here where you can do either a 50% crit chance or 50% uh, crit damage. Which you would have to go in and make a grip for, which I believe is also the, the thick longbow grip, but you just gotta use different, uh, what you call it, different uh, selections. Um, if you guys want, uh, let me know uh, through either a private message or a comment sorry brain fart comment down below uh, if you want i can go through the better grips halves pommels all the attachments for the weapons for you guys as well um so bow of the dragon nothing special uh just able to add a rune on it these two bows are really nice uh because they the wep or the target explodes on damage or on kill So shields are a little bit tricky. Again, there's going to be a few of them that um, I'm going to have you save, but you're not going to use until you get to my level. Ergo, the Winter's Breath. Uh, Berserk, 50% damage bonus, but you take 50% more damage. So at your guys' level, you're not going to want to be uh, taking more damage. So don't use this. I'm just saying keep it in your inventory for when you get stronger. Um, if by chance you get Shield of the Emperor keep it it's really overpowered it heals 50 percent of damage taken over 10 seconds so if i take 100 damage it's gonna heal 15 percent of that which is 150 or some shit if i'm doing my math correctly but i'm not probably um so keep it even if you're not going to use it there is a mage hunter shield which again i don't have which is really good um but uh it gives you i think five guard on hit there's an s watch guard that gives you three on hit um so I do apologize for not having them. I wasn't expecting to make this video. I just I sent a few uh, messages out there to some new players and some friends, and they were asking for it. So uh, yeah, uh, Shield of the Dragon. I mean, not really the greatest. Stinking Cheaters, an okay one. Unhit a chance to spawn a toxic cloud at the target's location, which it does do damage. It's, a, it's not going to show up damage numbers. You'd have to lock on to the enemy and see. Now, the next two shields are going to be uh, the best shields for you guys. Revered Defender Bulwark, 5% um, chance to cast Unbowed on hit. Unbowed, you guys probably don't know. Um, it's an old ability they took out of the game, but basically it's what Livid is. You, uh, basically what the Unbowed is going to do on the shield here is it's going to give you guard based off of how many enemies are nearby. Um, then the next shield is the upgraded version, which instead of the, uh, Unbowed gives you a 10% chance to grant 5 seconds of walk and Fortress. Yes, I said walk and Fortress. Which is amazing for your Legionnaire and Templar. 
especially Legionnaire, because let me hop over to Legionnaire. With Legionnaire, you're going to want to get Walking Fortress and upgrade it. A little pro tip if you upgrade it on in the ability tree here, right? And if there's any weapons or gear that have Walking Fortress, it upgrades that upgrades it on there. So when your shield Walking Fortress pops, it's going to be the upgraded version and passively giving you guard without you having to activate your Walking Fortress. That's why I like that shield or yeah, shield. All right, on to the armor. Um I should have said this in the very beginning, um but don't ever make your armor i mean don't do what i did and literally i went through and i <laughs> made every single piece of armor back on the 360. don't do that don't don't pull on me the only time you want to do that is once you get to my level where it don't really matter but for you guys the best armor you guys are going to get is going to be the drake scale which you get for free upon completion of the challenges an agent, uh, the experienced mage, experienced rogue, and experienced warrior. Um, while we're here in completion or completions and challenges, um, make sure you're going through and doing some of these because um, if you look at my top right corner there, uh, my 1908 is the Inquisition level or score, and but every time you complete one of the big or bolder stars, you get one or two points towards that, I believe. And now you're probably wondering what that does. Um, really, it's still... I don't consider it uh, guaranteed. Some people uh, notice better. But once that score in the top right hits about 800, you're going to start getting a lot better items. I just tell people to play the game and you'll eventually get everything you need. Um, there's really no way to grind for Inquisition score other than doing your challenges in the beginning. Um, the easiest ones you guys can do is weaponry because you're going to have all sorts of these, especially if you're playing by yourself. Um, the first one I'd recommend getting out of the way would be the maces because I hate maces. They're, they're not good. Um... Uh, rings. Uh, again, there's going to be a lot of rings I don't have because I don't need them. Same with my amulets because I don't use them. Belts. Uh, packed belts. Make sure you're keeping them. Uh, Inferno pack, storm pack. A uh, little gag here uh, for a buddy of mine. He still hasn't gotten his storm packed belt. And, well, <laughs> I'm keeping all my storm pack belts I get just to screenshot it to him when he finally gets his. Um, superb belt of urgency and staggering. Um, there's gonna be a superb belt of health. Definitely keep that. Um, belt of healing. There's probably more I'm missing because, like I said, I don't keep them. I don't need them. Rings. Um, definitely superb enhanced or just life drain rings. Um, they give you 10% heal on kill, which they stack. Crit damage rings. Keep those. Uh... Cool Beats, Crushing Leap, uh, Dragon Rage for sure, Lady's Wrath, keep that, Walking Bomb for sure, keep those rings, um, those are the, really the only ability rings I personally use, um, for amulets, <laughs> I only have two, uh, I don't need anything else, my physical immunity amulet does everything for me, um, but there's gonna be two different amulets, one called Amulet of Renewal, Actually, three, sorry. Amulet of Renewal, which I would recommend, because that increases the wearer's stamina and mana regeneration. Uh, Amulet of Accord, which will decrease your threat. And Amulet of Aggression, which will increase your threat if you're playing like Reaver, uh, Katari, or Legionnaire. Um, other than that, I think I covered majority... Oh, uh... Potions. There's only really four different potions I use. I use either Tears of the Dead, um, Jar of Bees, Mighty Offensive, and Rock Armor. However, instead of Mighty Offensive and Jar of Bees, I'd recommend Healing Mist, Regeneration, um, stuff like that because you're going to need the help. 
not saying you guys are bad. I mean, I'm going to say you are bad, but it's not your fault because, well, you're new. You can't really get your get stronger without playing the game. Um, so just if you guys ever think you're bad at the game, I mean, you're to me you are. <laughs> Uh, I don't mean to come off as rude, but yeah, you guys are. But to you guys, don't feel that way because you're new, you're learning. I'm always here to help. Um, the only way you're bad at the game is if you're uh, purposely running a level 1 with a packed belt. And yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely run uh, regeneration and healing with a majority of your characters and rock armor. Rock armor is going to give you, as you see, 200% armor for 30 seconds. Which will definitely help with uh, the bolters. I mean, you can go ahead and use other ones, but those are the four or three I recommend. Once you start getting stronger, uh, then I would recommend the Mighty Offensive, but you guys, I wouldn't really bother with it. You guys aren't going to do much damage as it is. Um, I think that's really about it for uh oh yeah, here um right here if you want to go change to the high dragon you can't go to the right it won't let me you got to go down again which sucks and then you can change it um for the most part just i would just stick on frost unless you're trying to go for your challenges um excuse me i had a yawn there um I don't think there's really much else I can help you with, with like a kind of a starter slash beginner's guide in the next few days here. Cause I'm most likely going to go left to right for uh, my in-depth guide for characters. Unless you guys want a specific character right away, let me know. I will uh, go ahead and do that. But yeah, I think that's it um make sure you guys like uh, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video um i don't do much for dragon age because it's an older game but uh i mainly do rainbow six siege content on the xbox and pc uh some other facebook games but yeah thank you guys uh let me go ahead and stop the recording